Happy Wednesday evening, Rice Station Christian Church. I'd like to welcome everyone out to this Bible study, and I hope we've all been in the Word this week and been praying one for another. Let's start off our Bible study tonight by going to the Almighty God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we come before you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. We pray, Father, that you direct us through our study tonight. May we all grow in the knowledge of your word. I pray for those, Lord, who are in the community around us, Father, who are sick and afflicted, Father, and I pray for their healing. I pray for those who are grieving, they have lost loved ones. I pray for those who are sitting by loved ones who are suffering, Father, and I pray for the EMTs and first responders, police officers. I pray for uh, your church here at Rice Station and the church leaders, Father, and each name that's on the prayer list, Father. We lift each one up and, and put them into your hands, knowing you're almighty, knowing you're in control, knowing you can heal. We trust in you, Father, and we thank you for Jesus. This is in Christ Jesus' name I pray, and amen. All people deal with anger. Uh, I have in my life, I'm sure you have, all people deal with anger, and Satan loves to use anger to his advantage against us. All the way back in the beginning, we know that Adam and Eve were created and put in the garden, and Adam and Eve, after they had fall, fallen, um, Adam and Eve, they had two sons to start with. They had Cain and Abel. And we know that Cain worked the soil, and Abel worked with the flocks. And in the course of time, they brought portions of what they'd been blessed with to give back to the Lord. And if you recall... Um, Abel gave his best, whereas Cain didn't give his best. And as a result, Cain became very angry. So if you would, to start off with tonight, turn with me to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, and we'll read verses 6 through 8. And there the scriptures say, Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do right, what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out in the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Cain allowed his anger and jealousy for his brother to turn into him murdering his brother. So we can see that anger has always been an issue with mankind all the way back to the beginning. So the title of our lesson today, it's actually lesson 10 in our lesson book, is Satan Gains Access Through Anger. Satan Gains Access Through through anger, Or another way that we could say that is Satan can get a foothold on our hearts, on our minds, on our lives through anger. So let's start off with our first point that we're going to talk about being understanding anger. Understanding anger. You see, there's nothing wrong with getting angry. There's absolutely nothing wrong with getting angry. In the flesh, there are going to be times when things happen. There are going to be times when people say certain things, and we're going to get angry. But as followers of Christ, we are also supposed to be self-controlled. Time after time throughout the Scriptures, we're told to be self-controlled. We're told in 1 Peter to be self-controlled and alert that our enemy, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. We're told that a fruit of the Spirit is self-control. A fruit of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us Christians is self-control. Now, in the event with Cain and Abel, we can see that Cain had no self-control. He had no control over his anger, and it got the best of him. Basically, we must, and I mean must, not allow anger, our anger, to result in a sinning. Turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. 
Ephesians chapter 4, and we'll read verses 26 through 27. Ephesians 4, 26 says, In your anger do not sin. Notice it does not say, don't get angry. No, it says, in your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Is, is there a reason the Lord has this put in his word? Don't give the devil a foothold? Absolutely. Absolutely. What the Apostle Paul, what the Lord is using the Apostle Paul to say to us is don't let your anger result in sin. Be sure that you resolve your anger quickly. So one thing we see here in that latter part of verse 26 is that anger should be short-lived and quickly resolved. See, it says right there, do not let, your sun, do not let the sun go down on while you are still angry. So, short-lived, quickly resolved. Now, let's see what Jesus says about this over in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. Remember, the Sermon on the Mount is Matthew chapter 5 through Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew 5, we'll go to verses 21 through 22. There, Jesus says... You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. Now this word, Raka, is, is a word of showing contempt. Okay, uh, Is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, You fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Think about it. How often does it happen when someone gets angry at their brother and they call them a name like a fool? Well, you see, it's, it's not our place to do that. Absolutely not. Only God can declare someone a fool. So both Jesus and Paul are giving us a warning. You know, the Bible's full of in encouragements, exhortations, and warnings. And so both Jesus and Paul are warning us of the dangers of anger. Because here's the deal. Anger is like a wound. And what I mean by that is if a wound, if you get like a cut on your arm, let's say, and that cut on your arm is not treated, then infection can get in that wound. And then that infection can fester up and get into your bloodstream. You could possibly lose that limb. Or you could possibly die because of the infection in your blood. The same is true about anger. Anger can start off with just being angry because someone said something. Then like the infection, it turns into a grudge. And that grudge can fester up and turn into hatred. And it can be that simple. It starts off with one little thing. And if we do not make it short-lived and quickly resolved, that can happen. Look with me in 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 and go to verse 15. And there the scriptures say, Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. So think about that. The Lord holds hatred so seriously that it's just as bad as murder. Okay? So we need to understand that. Because, you know, you can hate someone and think, well, you know, I'm not a murderer. I'm not as bad as this killer or that killer. But the Lord says, yes, it's a sin all the same. So let's now move to the two different types of anger. Okay? We kind of understand anger and what the Lord expects of us when it comes to anger. Let's now move to the two different types of anger. As I previously mentioned, it's okay to be angry, but we must not allow it to result in sin. Now, there are two types of anger. There is righteous anger and there is unrighteous 
anger. And let's take a look at what righteous anger is. Turn with me to John chapter 2. John chapter 2. And we'll start with verse 13. And there the scriptures say, When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at the table exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and and cattle, he scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned the tables. Do you think Jesus is angry there? Well, yes, he's, he's angry there. And then verse 16 says, To those who sold doves, he said, Get those out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. When you look at this same event, in the other Gospels, you see that Jesus says that you're turning my father's house, a house of prayer, into a den of thieves. You see, like I said earlier, Jesus didn't sin here because Jesus is the perfect sinless Savior, but he did become angry. He had righteous anger, anger over sin. Okay? Now let's look at an Old Testament example of this. And this example is found in Exodus chapter 32. If you would like, go ahead and turn your Bibles or Bible apps over to Exodus 32 and just kind of hold it right there for, for a few moments. Moses, at this time, is on Mount Sinai. And he's talking to God, and God is talking to Moses, and God is giving Moses instructions. And he's given him those two tablets that have the Ten Commandments on them. Okay, and the Israelites are below the mountain and they have started engaging in some sin. Remember, they pressured Aaron to make, take their jewelry and to make them an, an idol to worship, you know, just like they did back in Egypt, I'm sure. So he takes their earrings, he cracks under the pressure, and he makes them a golden calf. And all the people start worshiping and sacrificing to this golden calf. And then all kinds of other sin breaks out. You know, one sin leads to another sin leads to another sin. And there's all kinds of just horrible sins going on at the foot of the mountain while Moses is up on top talking to the Lord. And what happens is before Moses goes down... God tells Moses that he is angry. Okay? So let's look there in Exodus 32, verses 9 through 11. And there the scriptures say, I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them, that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation but Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God oh Lord he said why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand so after this you know the Lord already says he's angry because he's the all-knowing God and he knows the sins that the Israelites are engaging in and Moses has these two tablets of the Ten Commandments and he goes down to the bottom of the hill the bottom of Mount Sinai and when he gets down there, he sees the sin. And it's so emotionally damaging to Moses seeing all this that he throws down the two tablets and the tablets of the Ten Commandments break to pieces. And I personally believe that that's really symbolic of what the Israelites were doing. They were breaking all the Ten Commandments. So God is angry because of the sin of the Israelites. They know better. They've been taught better. I mean, if you go back to Exodus chapter 20, you see that they had been taught better. They had been told the Ten Commandments before. But now they're breaking the Ten Commandments. And let's look at what the Scriptures say was the end result of this in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 35. And there, just that very last verse, and there's a whole lot more in between there. 
But it says, And the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did with the calf Aaron had made. Now, what do these two events that I've mentioned have in common? The cleansing of the temple, people buying, selling, trading in the temple, and in the Old Testament, the Israelites worshiping this golden calf at the bottom of Mount Sinai. What do they have in common? Well, both the father and the son became angry because of sin. In a like manner, us having anger over sinfulness is okay. That's called righteous anger. I mean, as a Christian, I get angry when I hear about sins being legalized. I got angry a few years ago when I heard about them uh, raising an atheist statue beside the Ten Commandments that are displayed at some place in Florida. I mean, that, that angers me. Um, as a Christian, I get angry when people teach false doctrine because that's sinful. As a Christian, I get angry when I hear about husbands cheating on their wife and wives cheating on their husbands because it's sinful. Sin should bother us. Sin should anger us. These are just a few examples of righteous anger. And we do not ever need to let our righteous anger result in sin. Now let's look at the flip side of this and let's look at unrighteous anger. Here are a few examples of unrighteous anger. and We've all had unrighteous anger before. We have. Becoming angry when someone cuts you off in traffic and then maybe yelling <laughs> when they cut you off in traffic, that's unrighteous anger. Okay, Becoming angry over a sporting event is unrighteous anger. Becoming angry over someone smarting off to you is unrighteous anger. And we could go on and on naming these different worldly things that cause us to become angry. And we have to be careful, church. We have to be careful and make sure that we're wearing our full armor of God, that we're standing firm against the devil so that we don't let those moments of unrighteous anger bring us to sin. So let's move on here to ways that we can combat unrighteous anger. Now, I've mentioned one earlier. One way to combat unrighteous anger is to make sure we do our best to live self-controlled, to live with the fruit of the Holy Spirit shining out from our lives to this world. Solomon talks about this in Proverbs. If, if you would turn with me to Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs 15, and we'll just read the first verse, but you know he goes on to talk more about this in detail. But he says, A gentle answer, in this verse 1, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And I tell you what, when you're in an argument or a disagreement with somebody, it's easy to raise your voice, and it's easy to be hateful, it's easy to speak harsh words, but Solomon gives us the advice here of being self-controlled and to use a gentle answer when someone starts being rude, when someone starts being hateful or mean because it will turn away their wrath. But to do that, to speak the gentle answer, we got to have self-control. So that's one way to combat unrighteous anger when we have those moments that it flares up. Now, a second way to combat unrighteous anger is to not let your anger against someone linger on. Letting the sun go down on your anger and letting it go on for days and days. As I mentioned earlier, when that happens, it can so easily evolve into like an infection in your heart and in your mind and can result in hatred so we need to make sure that we resolve that problem quickly call that person on the phone that day you know if you get upset with someone that you're a christian call them that day and talk to them in christian love put your anger aside and say i want to talk about this you know i want to straighten this out i don't want us to go to bed angry at each other i don't want to let the sun go down on my anger a third way to combat unrighteous anger is to stop and pray. 
I mean, right there in that moment, you're angry, you're upset, pull off at the gas station after they cut you off in traffic and say a prayer. Refocus your heart, refocus your mind through prayer. There was this, um, I'm sure you all remember it, years ago there was Family Matters on TV with Steve Urkel and Carl Winslow, uh, if you remember that 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 show and Steve Urkel was always doing something to get under Carl's skin now Carl was a cop okay he had to deal with all kinds of people and he could control his temper just fine around all those people but when his neighbor neighbor Steve Urkel came over he would always destroy something or mess something up or cause a scene that would make Carl very angry So Carl started saying this thing over and over again. When Steve would make him mad, he'd say, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, what in the world is bothering me? 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, and he lost it at one point, and he looks at Steve and after reciting that, and he says, you, and he goes after him to grab a hold of him. But when we stop and pray, it's kind of like what, what Carl was doing there you know he was stopping and trying to get control but think about this when we actually do stop and talk to the master of the universe how much better can we get control well just so much better look in your lesson book if you have one on page 62 and I'd like to share with you what the book says on this subject it's right in front of the paragraph that says stop and pray It says, this is a spiritual process of counting to ten. Prayer can help us gain control by taking our feelings to God. And when we pray and ask for strength to deal rationally and calmly with the source of the anger, as well as the anger itself, Recall in the model prayer from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, that Jesus taught us to forgive our debtors. This model prayer easily provides a model for controlling our anger. Forgiveness is the key. Certainly, it is an individual that is call, uh, uh, certainly if it is an individual that is causing the anger, take that person to the Lord. And as the old song says, take your burden, take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Because as people, we've got this tendency to kind of take a situation to the Lord and then we try to fix it ourselves. But no, when, when you're angry and you have those moments, stop and pray, take that situation to God and leave it in His hands. You know, if you feel that, you know, that you need to resolve it that day like the scriptures tell us to do, then, then call that person later after some of that anger subsides and, and talk to them about the situation. Stop and pray. Church family, as we go day to day, may we take heed of the word and see the dangers of unrighteous anger. Don't, you know, don't allow yourself to... Let that anger fester. Don't allow yourself to let Satan get a hold on you because he will. He will get a hold on you and he will keep on trying to drag you down. He will keep on trying to keep you angry. Remember, Satan will tempt us to stay angry, but we're not going to let him win. Us losing control when we get angry can be very dangerous. It can destroy our witness. It can keep someone we love from coming to the Lord. It can hurt our friends, and we could just go on and on it. All the results of losing our temper, what and all that could take in. I mean, think about it. What are the results when, when you lose your temper? It's usually not good, right? So may we keep our anger in check biblically, applying the different verses that we've looked at today. I'd like to now talk to any lost souls or strayed souls that are listening to our broadcast this evening. Lost soul, I want you to know that the only way for you to make it to heaven, the only way for you to have your sins forgiven is to obey Jesus Christ. He's the one true Savior of the world. There are all these false religions in the world who will tell you that the person who who leads them is dead but here's the deal christianity will let you know that we serve the one true risen savior 
who said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father but through and by him. He was buried in that tomb. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. And 40 days later, he ascended to the Father. He did everything, going to the cross, going to the grave, raising again, teaching us. He did all that because he loves us, and he wants us to spend eternity in the glory land of heaven. But to have him, the Savior, Jesus, in your life, you must live out God's plan of salvation. And I go over that plan every single sermon and every single lesson that I do because there may be some lost soul who needs to hear what the Bible says about how to obey. And here's how we obey. We have to hear the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We must believe the Word of God. Without faith, without belief, it's impossible to please God. We must repent of our sins. Jesus tells us in Luke 13, 3, But I tell you, no, unless you repent, you likewise will all perish. We must repent, we must confess. Jesus said that if we don't confess him before man, he won't confess us before the Father in heaven. He won't confess us as his to the Father. So we must stand before our fellow man and confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You don't have to confess every sin that you've ever committed. The Lord already knows that. You just have to confess Christ. And you have to be baptized into Christ. Going into that watery grave of baptism and raising to a new life in Christ Jesus. And then you must live on from there, growing in the faith, in that spiritual, personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, being faithful to the end. And if you do, you make it to that glory land of heaven. And I tell you what, I look forward to that day when we will be in that glory land together. So lost soul... If you have a decision to make, don't wait, don't delay, don't put it off. The Bible says that our life is but a mist. It's but a vapor. We're here for a short time, and then we're gone. We never know when life is going to be over. We need to be ready. So if you need to obey Jesus Christ, or if you need to rededicate your life, feel free to give me a call. My number is 606-205-0549. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we come before you once again, Lord, and, and we love you. We thank you, Father, for your word that we can look into tonight, Father, and, and be reminded that it's okay to be angry, that as Christians we're to have righteous anger and that we're to do our best to avoid our anger resulting in sin. And I pray, Father, that we'll keep this in mind so that we don't let the devil get his foothold. We pray that you guide us through this week, Lord. I pray that you give us strength, that you just protect us, Lord. Just wrap your hands of blessing around our church family and around every listener who's uh, listening and watching this broadcast, Father. Lord God, we honor you and praise you and thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the empty tomb. And we pray all this in Christ Jesus' holy name, and amen.